Welcome back to Isha Gaming. We are going over more underrated and niche hidden gem JRPG anime style games that you can find on the Nintendo Switch. This is my second video in this series. Make sure you watch the first one also. And I will also be talking about four other games in this video. As usual, I'm using the term JRPG very loosely. So the first game today is Crystar and it is now out on the Switch and I played it last year or the year no way. I think I played this in 2020, two years ago actually. Crystar, I played that on PS4. I loved the graphics and I loved the colors in the game. It is an action RPG game by Gem Drops and published by Fury for PS4 back in 2018. Crystar is a very visually beautiful game where you play as Ray, a girl that accidentally killed her younger sister and in order to save her she makes a pact with two demons of purgatory. You have to fight your way through purgatory and kill a lot of lost souls. You do get several different party members as you progress the story. You can play all of them. But I have to mention that the dungeons, even though they look very pretty, they are in reality very repetitive and you do the same things over and over again. In between these dungeons you return to your real life bedroom where you can manage your collected items and hug your dog. So that's the gameplay loop. Repetitive, but it's so cute and the story is good. So that's basically the pros to this game. Story is good, visually really really freaking beautiful. The cons, like I said, is that it has a repetitive nature to it. Now my next game is Mary Skelter Finale. It's out on the Switch and PS4. It is a first person dungeon crawler RPG by ID Factory from 2021, last year. It's not only a first person dungeon crawler RPG, it is also full of visual novel vibes. The Mary Skelter series is a series that I highly recommend to all the niche interested people out there. I love all three games and I've had my obsessed moments with Mary Skelter. I know I have been talking a lot about these games. This was to me a lot of fun and I have enjoyed it a ton. This is a title with a ton of characters and all of them can be customized to a ton of different classes. Gameplay in between story sequences are that you navigate your way through these huge labyrinths and uncover the map as you go which is what I like to do. There are traps and obstacles in your way and all of your blood maidens like your party members has their own unique ability to tackle these obstacles. Like Sleeping Beauty she has bombs and they all have unique abilities. All three Mary Skelter games are currently out on the Switch but you will not find Mary Skelter 1. It is hidden deep within Mary Skelter 2 because if you purchase Mary Skelter 2 on the Switch you also get Mary Skelter 1 as a pack-in bonus. So that is the way that you can actually get to the whole trilogy right now on the Switch. Which I highly recommend, guys. But in this one, the third one, Finale, the game is set up for you to rotate between several teams, whereas one party can, for example, hit a switch in one dungeon that opens up the next path in another dungeon. So you switch between several parties. This is a very welcome new mechanic, as it helps to always keep things feeling really fresh. Art style is gorgeous and I use this soundtrack a lot in my videos. The pros to Mary Skelter is that in this type of first person dungeon crawler gameplay style sort of game, it is very satisfying to uncover the map and delve deeper into these huge labyrinths. That is a pro. However, the cons to this game is that sometimes the labyrinths are tricky. <laughs> Straight out difficult at times. At some points I had to look up guides. That's more on me though than the game, I think. Because it turns out the answers, they were in front of me. Now my next game is gonna have to be Fairy Fencer F Advent to Dark Force. This is one of Compile Hearts' best RPG games, originally released back in 2013. Then later remade and then made its way over to the Switch in 2019. In this game you follow Grumpy and Lazy Fang, who against his will comes into a situation where it's expected of him to help revive the good old goddess or the vile god. That's 
frozen in time with a bunch of swords in them. The swords are actually fairies called furies and can only be wielded by fencers, which Fang turns out to be. The character writing of this character and also the other main characters in this game are hilarious and so good, too good. The things that they say, I swear. I did a full review video on this game several years ago, uh, link down below to that. And it is also a game that I have bought several times. I own this game on PC, Switch, and I recently also bought it on PS4 to start over again. So it is definitely a game that I've been coming back to several times because I find it to be such a pleasant and funny game. There are many playable characters, quests, dungeons, combat is nice, very colorful and you can really power grind the levels by speeding up the battles. The pros to Fairy Fencer F is definitely gonna have to be the funny dialogue found in this game. Definitely the funniest dialogue in a game that I've ever witnessed. Check out this game. Now the cons. We gotta talk about the cons also. The game can feel a tiny bit budgety. And I also wish we had a proper hub area. These are things that I am hoping for in a sequel. Definitely hoping for a sequel to this universe and to this concept, the story and lore and stuff. I like this game. Highly recommend it. <laughs> Check out Fairy Fencer app. Now the last game of this video is a very dear game to me. Fire Emblem Warriors, the first one. The second one is announced, but I'm talking about the first one, which went under the radar for so many people. And it is definitely, in my opinion, better than Hyrule Warriors, including Age of Calamity. And I can't believe this, that I am calling a Fire Emblem game niche and underrated. I feel it is niche and underrated, but I feel like it shouldn't be that, so that is why I'm including it. I will definitely call it underrated though. This is a hack and slash muso game set in the Fire Emblem universe. It is a game I never hear anyone talk about. I wanted to include this game simply because I love it with a passion. And now with a new game coming out, being announced, cannot wait for that one. This is a 2017 game by Nintendo. It did not get the praise it deserved in my opinion. It's one of my most played Switch games still. I have over 80 hours in it. I have all of the DLC content. There's just a ton of content to burn through. A ton of playable characters, an engaging story that I very much enjoyed. It is fun to play and I was addicted. The pros to this game is that I loved it and there is a ton of content in it. Cons... There is no cons to this game. It's a perfect game. I love it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you want to listen to Disky Disc, the podcast. I want you to follow my Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to this... this <laughs> subscribe to this video. Subscribe to this channel and like this video. <clears throat> I appreciate you taking the time to watch Isha Gaming. I'm gonna tell you an easter egg. Did you know that this is where I sit? I have curtains here to have the black background happen, but normally I sit down here uh, in uh, all the videos. <laughs> Anyways, bye guys.